There's no maybe about it. Always Be My Maybe is one Netflix original movie you should definitely watch. Starring Ali Wong and Randall Park, the film has been hailed by critics and viewers alike as a fresh and hilarious success. So just how did this gem of a movie come to see the light of day? If you thought the on-screen chemistry between Ali Wong and Randall Park was pretty incredible, you're not alone. In fact, part of that might be because the comedic duo goes back a long time, all the way back to college at UCLA, if you can believe that. They met in the late 1990s at a friend's place, where said friend was hosting a fried rice cooking competition, as reported by the Washington Post. The two were also part of the LLC Theatre Company, a comedic performing arts group that Park co-founded. And in a twist that confirms all too clearly that truth is stranger than fiction, Always Be My Maybe premiered at the Regency Village Theatre in Westwood, which is where UCLA is located. The surreality of that was not lost on them either. Wong told Variety that being in Westwood was, quote, a trip. Brilliant! Excellent as always! Ta-ta, Julian! Okay, first of all, you sound like Count Chocula. For as much acclaim as Always Be My Maybe is receiving, the movie might never have been made if not for a fateful 2016 interview Wong did with The New Yorker. Wong was riding high from the success of her Netflix special, Baby Cobra, and she mentioned that she and Park had been trying to make a specific movie for years. Their, quote, version of When Harry Met Sally. Of course, by their version, Wong presumably meant an Asian take, as there aren't exactly a ton of rom-coms out there with Asian-American leads. It didn't take very long for the word to get out about it after that, and boy did the internet respond. Vulture even put out a plea to Hollywood, begging to get the movie greenlit. Park recalled in an interview with the Washington Post, a lot of outlets picked up on that and we got a lot of calls from studios and producers. We realized there was a demand for it, that's when we kind of hunkered down and started working. So Wong and Park got to writing the script, along with screenwriter Michael Golomko. The rest, as they say, is history. When Harry Met Sally wasn't the only film that Wong and her crew looked to for inspiration while birthing Always Be My Maybe into existence. The 1992 star-studded comedy Boomerang, starring Eddie Murphy, was also a film Wong had in mind when fleshing out the characters and meditating on the comedic aspects of the film. She told Rolling Stone, It was so revolutionary because it was all these women being funny in a way you had never seen women be funny before. Like Eartha Kitt showing all this sexual prowess, Grace Jones as Strange, Tisha Campbell, they were so unafraid to express what they wanted. Additionally, Wong appreciated that the premise of Boomerang was black employees working at a black advertising agency, something she found refreshing and, quote, empowering. She dished. They didn't explain it and certainly didn't apologize for it. It just was what it was. The late 2010s marked an uptick in the amount of movies starring Asian-American actors, like Crazy Rich Asians and To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Always Be My Maybe is a welcome addition to these groundbreaking films, and it really is the first of its kind. Director Nanoshka Khan gushed in an interview with Variety, it makes me want to see more. When you have genres that have been around for a long time, like romantic comedy or horror, the thing that feels exciting and fresh is when you see people who haven't normally been centered and then suddenly, like, gets a new jolt. The same holds true for Jordan Peele's Us, a horror film predominantly starring black actors. In addition to that, Park and Wong emphasized that it was equally important that they make a fantastic movie, as people wouldn't want to see it otherwise. It had to be great. Wong joked, Nobody would care and be like, oh hey guys, representation doesn't matter. Go away, representation. For us, it was most important that we really have fun and that hopefully that fun shows up in the finished product. Always Be My Maybe is filled with many little moments that Asian Americans resonated with in a special way, such as Judy telling Sasha, And we Koreans use scissors for everything. And Sasha preparing Spam Musubi for dinner. Those moments are important, as they allow families descended from immigrants to see bits of their own everyday lives on the screen in front of them. While that was indeed intentional, Park also wanted to make sure that the film wasn't rife with stereotypes or populated by characters that viewers would expect. The actor explained to the Washington Post, We wanted to do things that felt new and exciting to us, especially in a rom-com where so much of it is formula-based. There are some of those beats in our movie, but we really wanted to show something new in the relationships of these characters. To that end, they sought to make the relationship between Marcus and his dad, who doesn't speak with an accent, affectionate and close. Hey, at some point, you're gonna have to take a chance on something, son. That flies in the face of the stereotypical portrayal, which shows Asian mothers and fathers with thick accents. 
One of the many hilarious and bitingly smart aspects of the film is Marcus's band, Hello Peril. With clever lyrics and fun performances from the actors, you can't help but crack a smile when the band takes the stage. And yes, that is the famous Bay Area rapper Lyrics Born on stage with Marcus. Plus, Dan the Automator actually produced all of the Hello Peril songs according to Pitchfork. And get this, Park even wrote his own lyrics. It probably helps that he had his own 90s hip-hop band, Illigan, to use as inspiration. You might not have caught it, but Park very deliberately named the band Hello Peril for a reason. In an interview with Pitchfork, he revealed, I wanted it to be an Asian-American band, and the name is a take on the historical term Yellow Peril, which is basically the Western fear of the Far East taking over. The concept of Yellow Peril has repeated itself throughout history, and it felt like something Marcus would have named the band, because he's a community guy and he knows his history. How clever can you get? It was pretty impossible to miss that Daniel Day Kim played the role of Brandon Choi, Sasha's fiancé. You might have recognized him from his work in Lost as Jin Su Kwan, or perhaps as Jack King in Insurgent, the sequel to Divergent. While we're over here wondering why he doesn't have his own James Bond movie yet, Kim was just massively stoked to be cast in Wong and Park's film. In an interview with Variety, he gushed, they didn't even have to pitch it because I just wanted to be a part of it, because I'm a fan of theirs, and I love the idea of two Asian-American leads in a rom-com, and I wanted to do comedy, so it was a good fit. Plus, he says he loved getting to play a jerk. Hey, he might be the sweetest guy in real life, but Kim seems to be a pro at playing jerks. So you want me to go to San Francisco alone? That's the beauty of it. We'd both be in new surroundings. We'd be apart. Together. And Wong knew what she was doing with this casting, too. The actress shared, I made Netflix spend all this money on this movie just so that, as a 37-year-old mother of two, I could kiss Daniel Day Kim and Keanu Reeves. You might have noticed some subtle cultural details in Always Be My Maybe. For example, in the beginning, Sasha and Marcus remove their shoes when they come indoors, only replacing them when it's time to leave. That's akin to Judy pointing out that Koreans use scissors for everything. But some of these touches were the work of director Khan, whose movie debut is arguably a visionary one. She wanted to make sure that the time and place, the San Francisco Bay Area in the 90s, was reflected in the film, especially for Asian Americans. She explained in an interview with the Los Angeles Times, It was important because Ali is half Vietnamese, half Chinese, Randall is Korean, and we wanted it to be authentic to everyone's experience. And Randall's experience is different from Ali's experience. We wanted to show that these things can coexist very peacefully. You don't have to just choose one thing. So if you felt transported to a San Francisco where the rent wasn't so darn high and there weren't hipster coffee shops everywhere, that's the reason why. Kimchi stew, lemongrass dumplings, free shumai, and yes, even venison sous vide, complete with headphones. Comes with headphones so you can hear the sound of the exact animal you are about to consume, illustrating nature's life to death cycle. In so many scenes in Always Be My Maybe, food plays an important role, both as a marker of cultural identity and a force that can either bring people together or break them apart. Food is important in every culture, and in this film, viewers are treated to the cuisine that's significant in Asian American traditions, such as Korean and Chinese food, lest we forget that Sasha is a chef, and a very successful one at that. To that end, it makes total sense that they hired celebrity chef Nikki Nakayama as a consultant for the film. Director Nanatka Khan told the Los Angeles Times, She had such a keen sensibility about what the dishes should be. For me, food is so intertwined with memories. You cannot see a family member for years and suddenly a dish or a smell or a taste will remind you and you're transported back. That was a key part of the movie too because they did have that history together. Who's hungry now? <laughs> All of the locations they filmed in the movie had a significant sense of place, one that felt familiar, especially if you grew up in the Bay Area in the 90s as Wong did. And even though Park grew up down south in Los Angeles, he put a lot of himself into his character Marcus. In an interview with NPR, Park shared, Creating Marcus and playing him just came from a real place for me in terms of the relationship to my dad and the connection to my mom. And you know what? That really comes through. Believe it or not, Park literally brought aspects of his family onto the film set, specifically those paintings. He explained, One thing about the paintings in the house that we talk about a lot is that those are actual paintings that my mom made because she was a painter. We used her actual artwork in the house. All of that helped make things feel as genuine and close to the heart as possible for him. 
If you saw the trailer before watching Always Be My Maybe, you knew Keanu Reeves was going to show up at some point. But if you didn't, you might have fallen out of your chair when he turns up as a satirical version of himself as Sasha's date. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, you're bleeding. You see how easy that was, Marcus? Remember that dinner scene? Yeah, it was basically one of the funniest moments of the film, complete with lines from Reeves like the character's $6,400 meal costing... Less than a residual paycheck for my hit movie Speed. Of course, Wong and Park wrote the role explicitly for Reeves without knowing if he'd actually take it. But much to their surprise, he did, and he reportedly was a total blast to work with. Wong had some specific motives behind this casting, too. In an interview with Vulture, she confessed, "...it's always been important to me to express my desire and attraction toward Asian American men. Since I first watched Speed, I was very aware that Keanu was Asian American, because my family and community wouldn't shut up about it. Maybe other people didn't know, but I never forgot that." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.